three women killed in cold blood in a small apartment in the heart of Paris. The murderer is presumed to be someone close to the victims. An entire community is in shock. This could be a good starting point for a thriller, don't you think? But this is very much a true story. This triple murder was committed on January the 9th, 2013 in Paris. And if we take a closer look at the profile of the protagonists, this incident appears to be a state affair. The victims are three Kurdish militants. Sakina Chances, 54, was one of the founders of the PKK, the Kurdish Workers' Party. Fidan Dohan, 30, was in charge of the party's lobbying efforts. Leila Salamez, 25, was a young militant. This suspect, Umar Guni, a Turk who is currently imprisoned in France while awaiting trial, was not just a simple murderer, but a secret agent on a mission. A delicate affair for the French authorities. Soyez assuré de la détermination des autorités françaises pour faire la lumière sur ces actes. Est-ce que c'est un coup politique selon vous Je vous remercie. Monsieur Valls, est-ce que c'est un coup politique A crime which implicates one of France's biggest strategic allies, Turkey, and its current president, Erdogan. Doğrudan her şey Erdogan. The Kurds suspect a political assassination. Was Ömer Güni working for someone? We travel to Turkey, France, Germany, Switzerland and Belgium to investigate the man implicated by all the evidence. A man is defended tooth and nail by his loved ones. <laughs> An investigation that upsets the Turkish authorities. Who stood to gain by making these three women disappear? The triple murder took place at the beginning of 2013, barely 200 metres from the Gare du Nord train station in Paris. For the relatives of the three assassinated women, coming here is always an ordeal. This morning, Selma, a young Kurd living in Paris, welcomes the brother of one of the victims. <laughs> <laughs> Metin Chances lives in Rotterdam. He's the younger brother of Sakina Chances, one of the three Kurds assassinated on the 9th of January 2013. For three years, he's been unable to return to the place where his sister was killed. Today, he's going to take that step. Sakin and her colleagues were found dead on the first floor of this building, the office of the Kurdish movement in France. The police tape still hasn't been removed. The Kurds have made this place into a sanctuary. Behind the door, the crime scene is intact. Yani sakinler kendimi daha yeniden yakın hissediyorum, yerinden yanında hissediyorum. Çünkü ben onu şey olarak kabul etmedim şimdi, hal etmiyorum, etmeyeceğim de. Çünkü o dağlar da onsuz yaşayamaz, onu da biliyorum. O da onsuz, onlarsız yaşayamıyor. Dağlar da onsuz yaşayamıyor. Sakine, e, ezilmiş bir halkın temsilcisiydi, bir halk temsili 
katledilmek istendi burada. Sadece e, o üçünün e, dedenlerin katledilmesi yok ortada. Bana göre insanlık katledildi burada, ezilmişlik katledildi, kadınlık, kadın katledildi burada, e, bir ulus katledilmek istendi burada. This nation is the Kurdish nation and Zakin had become one of its emblems. She built her legend far from Paris in the mountains of Kurdistan. There, 35 million Kurds live, divided between Iran, Iraq, Syria and especially Turkey. In Turkey, Kurds call for their autonomy and the recognition of their identity. But the Turkish state violently represses this minority. Heavy-handed raids on Kurdish areas. Arbitrary arrests, like here in the southeast of the country. The Turks even went as far as destroying 3,000 villages and killing thousands of Kurds. In 1978, to combat this oppression, Sakin Chansis created the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK, with Abdullah Öcalan, the head of the rebellion, seen here paying tribute to her. The PKK advocates armed combat against the Turkish state. Like all the leaders of the party, Sakin travels through the villages and calls on the Kurds to revolt. In just a few years, the PKK causes serious problems for the Turkish army and becomes the bet noir of the regime. Thousands of Kurds are arrested. Sakin was one of the first prisoners. In 1979, she was incarcerated in the renowned Diyarbakir prison in the southeast of Turkey. Her brother Metin was also imprisoned there. For eight years, he was tortured daily. The world, I mean, the other one, especially, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the her döneminde yaşadığımız şeyi anlatıyorum. Yani her saatinde yaşadığımız şey bu normal olarak. Ee, oradan geliyor. Çok basit bir bahaneyle diyor ki uzat ellerini burada. İşte sen diyor ne düşündün örneğin. Elini oradan uzatıyorsun dışarıya. Kazma ve balta sapları var ağaç gürgenden. Onlarla vuruyorlar ama kim vuruyor, nasıl vuruyor, kaç kişi vuruyor bilmiyorsun. Ellerin e, bir süre sonra parmak araları patlamaya başlıyor, yarılmaya başlıyor ve eller düz tutamıyorsun. Artık eller kasılmaya başlıyor. Ve Sakine'nin e, onlara karşı haykırması dilden dile anlatılıyordu. Sakine dönüyor Esat Oktay'a, işkence yapan Esat Oktay diyor ki, e, siz diyor e, benim göğsümü, bir kadının göğsünü e, kesmeye utanmıyorsanız, utanmıyorsunuz, ben utanmıyorsanız ben karşınızda e, bir devrimci olarak ah demeye utanıyorum. Years of incarceration and torture did nothing to diminish Sakin's determination. In 1991, she was released after 12 years in prison. She took up arms and became a heroine for all Kurdish fighters. But in 2001, the United States put the PKK on their list of terrorist organizations. When Sakin obtained her status as a political refugee in France, her brother was relieved. <coughs> Dağda öldürülebileceğini her zaman bekliyorduk, düşünüyorduk. Çok arkadaşlar öldürüldü. Fakat biz Avrupa'da, özellikle de Paris'te böyle bir cinayeti aklımızın ucundan bile geçirmezdik yani. Hiç düşünemiyorduk bile yani. For Nursel, a key figure in the Kurdish community in France, the murder of three of her friends is a message from Turkey, a political message. Moi, je considère ce triple assassinat comme un, un assassinat politique, mais des trois générations. Cet assassinat politique, il visait l'histoire du peuple kurde, de la résistance du peuple kurde, donc Sakine. La voix du peuple kurde, donc Rojbin Fidan. Elle faisait beaucoup de lobbying 
euh, dans les instances européennes, au Conseil de l'Europe notamment. Et la jeunesse, l'avenir du peuple kurde, Leila. The French justice's investigation into this matter is now closed. A Turkish suspect is behind bars. His name is Umar Guni. A few months before the crime, he was hired as a driver by Sakin Chances. He is the last person to have seen the victims alive. Traces of gunpowder were found in his bag. This, and above all, his activities the day of the murders made him the prime suspect. Suspicious comings and goings filmed by surveillance cameras that we recovered. The morning of the incident, at 10.30 a.m., he meets Zakin Chances at the post office in Bobigny to take her back to Paris by car. At 11.19 a.m., they go into a parking lot near to Garde Nord station. At 11.29 a.m., Omar Guni and Sakin Chances join Fidan and Leila, the two other victims, at 147 Rue Lafayette, the office of the Kurdish movement in France. In his hand, he's holding a brown leather bag. Omar Guni comes out 20 minutes later, still carrying the bag, alone. He goes back to the parking lot. At noon, we see him busying himself in the trunk of the car for two minutes. Then, at 12.11 p.m., he once again goes into the building. He stays there for 45 minutes, according to the experts. It's around that time when the three Kurdish militants in the apartment were shot. When Umar Gurni comes out of the building at around 1 p.m., he's strangely covering his head with a hood, even though it isn't raining. Umar Gurney is no longer carrying a brown leather bag, but has a white plastic bag with a dark object inside. At 1.07 p.m., he drives his car out of the parking lot alone. Eight days after the triple murder, Umar is remanded in custody. Since 2013, he's been awaiting trial in a cell in Fren prison, claiming his innocence. But who really is Omar Guni? How did this young Turk become the driver of the icon for the Kurdish struggle? The first time that he appeared in the community, in autumn 2011, is at the Kurdish Cultural Association in Villiers-le-Bel, to the north of Paris. The organisation may not look much, but it is here that the highest leaders of the Kurdish movement in Europe can be found. The president of the organization still remembers the impression that Umar Guni made when he pushed open their door. At the time when Umar Guni introduces himself to the organization, he has a reassuring profile. A young, divorced Turk looking to find his Kurdish roots. He's 30 years old and quickly becomes close to some of the younger members like Bayram and Kinan. Comment vous pourriez décrire sa personnalité Il était comment Umar spoke several languages. He was heavily involved in the life of the organization. He quickly establishes a network far beyond the walls of the Villiers-le-Bel organization 
and little by little gets closer to the leaders of the PKK. His ex-flatmate in Seine Saint-Denis witnessed him climbing the ranks. Ömer Göni, the best of the Kurds. However, when you scratch the surface, another face appears far from that of the friendly activist. To uncover the real Ömer Göni, we have to follow his path back to Turkey, his place of birth. That's where his parents settled after the trouble. Does he really have Kurdish origins, as he claims? Since we started our investigation, we've tried to get an interview via Irma's lawyer. But without success, the prime suspect's parents refused to talk to us. After the crime, they lost everything, their restaurant in Paris and, above all, their peace. Fearing reprisals, they left France and now live in the suburbs of Ankara. I think it's there. This is where Umar Guni's parents live. I think they're going to be delighted to see us. We're going to wait until someone comes out to go in. Ah, there's a noise. I think we can go. Umar Gurney's parents know that we want to meet them. We don't expect a warm reception. So we opted for a hidden camera. It's Umar Gurney's father who opens the door. Hello, I'm Sylvain Louvet. Don't get angry. We're just looking for people who really knew Omar Goni, who can talk to us about him. His daughter, then his wife, try to calm him down. Without succeeding. We leave without having been able to ask if Kurdish blood is really running through Umar Guni's veins. But we'll find out a bit more with one of his uncles. Omar Gune in France say that he's Kurdish. Are you a Kurdish family? <laughs> Patriot? The man doesn't know that we're filming him. <laughs> He tells us that, despite what Umar says, the Guni family are Turkish and proud of it.